long story short these addresses are called physical addresses and these addresses are called logical addresses hey guys what's up i hope you're doing great in this video i'll be telling you about how the operating system manages the main memory these will be core concepts very important concepts before moving on please make sure you subscribe to my channel and you've hit the bell icon for notifications okay so uh, main memory is before we move any further we you should you need to understand what main memory is so i hope most of you know before this but uh, for those who don't uh, let me comment a little on that main memory is just a contiguous array of locations it's just an array of different uh, memory locations which are addressable which you can address which you can read using an address or you can write to these locations using uh, an, uh, the same address right so this is the concept of main memory probably it's the most uh, simple uh, or the simplest component in a computer system right so this is how the main memory looks like if you want to visualize how uh, main memory may look like so these are all the addresses of the main memory uh, they start from zero this is the lowest address sometimes th this picture is drawn upwards like it the addresses start from zero obviously it's the same thing the address is simply increment in uh, you know uh, by some number so if it's a byte addressable memory for example there's a byte stored it will be the address will increment by one zero to one then two then three then four so there are different addressing schemes which will which you which you will uh, study in computer organization course right so it's a long list of uh, locations with all every location having a distinct and unique address so if you want to for example read address nine you don't need to go through all of these things you simply the system gives you the uh, based on the address which is nine gives you this value which is stored inside this memory address so this is the basic concept of main memory right so main memory has uh, uh, you know all the processes and the operating system itself stored in it right so here you can see in this picture that uh, this is the memory this is the complete memory it may not end here it may be going uh, further from this it is just for illustration so starting from the lowest address which is zero we store the operating system code operating system uh, is just like a program it is just a huge program which has different parts so uh, one of those parts of the operating system is memory management uh, uh, module you can say and that memory management module is also stored the code for that is also stored somewhere inside this part and in the same memory we have all the programs we want to by we uh, now i mean the user the user may want to run the all the programs are stored there and we looked earlier we studied earlier that these programs when they are running they are called processes so we have different processes stored so for example the operating system started at zero it ended at some address and from the next address which in this picture is two five six triple zero the process the first process started the process went on occupying different locations first location second location third location all these locations are being occupied with this process let's call it process one and the, the uh, that process ends at some you know uh, location of the address so uh, a process uh, you know uh, it can span uh, multiple addresses like 100 addresses or 200 or 300 or 500 etc uh for example this process let's call this process number two process number two is starting from this address we call the starting address the base address and it is going up to another address which we we don't see uh, readily in this picture here this would be the address where the process uh, the line the last line of the process will be the difference of these two numbers which would be the size of this process is called limit right so every process has two distinct uh, values associated with it with respect to memory so uh, you can say that for example uh, process one has this base address and its size is indicated in its limit right similarly for process two this is the base address and this is the size of that process how do you make use of these two things so every this process will have a base value and a limit value this process will have a base value and a limit value this process will have a base value and a limit value every single process in the system will have a base value and the limit value every time a process is loaded into uh, the cpu the process is executing in the cpu the operating system is actually in charge of sending 
uh, as we uh, saw in the chapter of processes that the pro operating system is responsible for sending the process into CPU. So when the operating system does that, uh, the operating system is actually looking after all the addresses which are generated by this program. So for example, this program is interested in reading or writing to a memory address, right? So that is the address which is generated by this pro program or a process or this process. Every time a particular process for example process p2 is loaded into the cpu the base value of process p2 and the size which is the limit value of that process are also loaded into the cpu these are cpu registers which are inside the cpu they're just shown for illustration outside otherwise these are cpu registers so the operating system is responsible for loading these uh, re register values uh, whenever a context switches to this process, process P2, right? How do we make use of these values? Every address this program P2 generates is checked whether that address is inside the base and base plus limit values, which in case of P2 would be this thing and this thing. So every address this process generates must be greater or equal to this thing and must be less than this thing right so this is what is happening it the uh, the operating system uh, using the cpu is checking every address for being greater or equal to the base address and being less than the base plus limit value right so this is called hardware address protection so the base and base limit values uh, base plus limit values are used to uh, protect the process from hardware uh, errors now we have a concept of logical versus physical address space. Logical address space is that address which is uh, for, let me just show you here. This is process one, right? This is our imagination. Uh, we coded the program, we it compiled the program. Uh, so now this program P1 is here, right? So we also made another program called P2. This is the second program. So there can be so many other programs, but I'm just showing you two here every process will have different lines of code obviously this is first line second line third line and so on so inside the process the address value of these lines would be something like 0 1 2 3 and so on right similarly for process p2 whenever we are inside the context of process p2 we would like to visualize the addresses of p2 again starting from 0 why because uh, it's convenient to do that Every program sees their pro uh, every programmer sees their program starting from the first line. So you never say that my program inside the operating system has line number one million. It is always starting from line one or in uh, in uh, you know you know addresses line zero. But when these programs are actually stored in the main memory, for example, this is the main memory. This will get some address. Like for let's say this it got address number one hundred. It got address number one hundred and one, and it received uh, different uh, addresses while when we came to process p2 it would definitely be not 100 right it, it would be different from 100 let's say it is 500 the first line of p2 is stored in physical memory at 500 the next would be 501 the next from that would simply keep on incrementing and all the addresses would be uh, further from this so long story short these addresses are called physical addresses and these addresses these are called logical addresses i hope uh, it's become really uh, uh, concrete and uh, it's easy to see now what the difference between a physical address and a logical address logical address is the address of the program with respect to its itself while the physical address is the address of that program when it is stored in the main memory swapping Sometimes what happens is that the memory is uh, not sufficient for, for the number of programs we are running, which is actually most of the cases in uh, modern operating systems. We don't have, most of the users don't have sufficient amount of memory to keep all the programs they are running at the same time. So what the operating system does when, uh, you know, the, the memory reaches a certain threshold or it is about to be fully occupied by all the, by all the programs, it pushes out pushes out a number of uh, programs or a part of a program out into the disk the hard disk or solid state disk any kind of disk which is inside the primary disk which is uh, sorry the secondary disk which is inside the computer it pushes out some of the programs onto that disk 
if it pushes out a part of that program to the disk that is called virtual memory but if it pushes the complete program out which is called rollout uh, to the secondary storage which is also called the backing store it is called swapping swapping is really important you may have noticed when you use for example windows you haven't you haven't uh, restarted the computer for a while and you keep it on standby mode so when you go back to it you know, one of the programs which you haven't used for a while and it is still loaded in the memory uh, and you click on it and it, it takes a while to uh, for it to come back so that is a swapped out process because the operating system made room for other uh, processes to uh, stay while uh, you don't uh, pay attention to that program so this is the same thing here in picture for example there was a program it was swapped out and uh, another programs were swapped in into the memory right so then how do we manage the programs in the memory one uh, a simple approach is contiguous you simply uh, keep on storing the programs one after the other first program first the operating system then first program then another program and so on so contiguous uh, is similar to multiple partition and multiple partition says that if a program leaves or it is finished execution we allocate that space as free space and uh, if it was a contiguous allocation we won't be able to use that so that would be a silly scheme it, it's an ancient scheme very old so we don't really uh, consider that a scheme uh, anymore so uh, now what happens is uh, in this multiple partition allocation we are allowed to uh, accommodate a new process into the space which was made by an old process so process na 9 has taken place here and then there is a new partition created here and a new process comes which is called process 10 and we simply fill it in into this uh, new space the free space the newly created free space is also called a whole uh, fragmentation is a concept which uh, frequently occurs in uh, systems like these for example there was a process which uh, finished execution and it uh, you know created a space this space is called fragmentation and to be particular external fragmentation this external fragmentation can be large can be small uh, at times it can be so small that none of the new processes can enter this space they cannot be accommodated by the operating system in this space that's when we say that external fragmentation has become uh, a problem it is uh, creating space which is useless and we cannot make use of this space one solution to this is compaction you can simply uh, if you for example there was a program uh, after different programs coming and leaving there was a program which was here right there was a free space here and there was a space free space here these two free spaces i'm assuming are not sufficient enough to hold uh, new processes so what could be the most uh, obvious solution you would simply push out this process a little bit further up ahead and this ag again up ahead and you will in the bottom side you will see now all the holes collected together uh, and the fragmentation would be gone and that will be called compaction i hope you understood everything i hope you don't have any questions if you have any questions you can comment below if you like the video press like if you haven't yet please subscribe thanks for watching